the beautiful names of beloved prophet the beautiful names of beloved prophet the beautiful names of beloved prophet Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Wassalatu wassalamu alayka ya Rasulullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah Wassalatu wassalamu alayka ya Nabiyallah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurullah Dear viewers welcome to another episode of our program Asma'un Nabi and like the previous episodes, inshallah, we'll be mentioning numerous names of our master, sallallahu alayhi wa and trying to explain them as well in light of what the scholars of Islam have written in their precious books. But to begin, a clarification that has been made in every episode so far, and that is that, yes, Muslims desire to keep their names, their children's names, upon the name of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa And this is something that shows that we are true lovers of the Prophet Islam, that we would like to share the same name. Now, when you name your child Muhammad and Ahmad, as mentioned in the hadith, you will gain many blessings. The father and the child will be in paradise. That's one hadith. But there are other names of the Prophet Islam that we are covering in every episode. And they are Sifati names, names based on the characteristics of Rasulullah Now, As for those names, not every name can be kept. Because the scholars say that some names are specific and exclusive to our master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as such, when you want to keep any such name, first consult with the ulama, the scholars of Islam, and ask them, can I keep this name? If they permit, if they give ijazah, permission, so be it. If not, then we have to think of another name. Because the last thing we want to do is make an intention to gain the blessings from a name of Rasulullah alayhi wa only to find out later on that it was not even allowed to keep that name because that name was exclusive to the Prophet So inshallah, please act upon this advice, consult the ulama, ask them once they give the go-ahead, then yes, you can keep your child's name upon any name that they permit and allow. Now in this episode, again numerous names will be mentioned. The first one, let's begin. This is that blessed name which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has referred to his beloved Prophet with in the previous scriptures, meaning in the scriptures, the holy scriptures that were given to the previous Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, this was the name given to the Prophet alayhi salam. What is the name? The name is Al-Muqaddas, Al-Muqaddas. And this name has been mentioned by Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti Shafi'i rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. The meme has a dhamma, qaf has a fatha, the dal has a tashdeed and a fatha, and seen is the last letter, Muqaddas. And according to some scholars, the reading uh, is Al-Muqaddis. And we will explain how the meaning will change as well based on how you read it. So Imam Suyuti rahmatullahi ta'ala he says, Sammahu Allah ta'ala bithalika fi kutubi anbiya'ihi. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muqaddis in the books that were revealed to his Anbiya alayhi wasalam, meaning the previous Anbiya alayhi wasalam, who came before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasalam. So as I mentioned, Al-Muqaddas with a Fatha on the Dal and Al-Muqaddis with a Kasra on the Dal as well. These are two variations, two ways you can read it. And the reading is slightly different, but the meanings can differ as well vastly. Now the word Muqaddas, this is derived from the word taqdis, taqdis. Taqdis means tathir. Tathir means pure. And it also means to be distant from something. Uh, what it means is distant from defects, or yub, any such trait that is not befitting a person, especially the Prophet ﷺ. Now when we look at the the blessed life of the Prophet ﷺ, his that, his noble personality. We know that he is such a an individual who is free from every defect, every evil trait. He is free from sins. Alhamdulillah, the Prophet ﷺ is ma'asum, anil khata wa dhunub. He's free from sins, he's free from wrongdoings as well. Now, every single one of his characteristics is excellent to 
the greatest degree, meaning non in creation, shares the attributes of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, meaning his attributes are unique to him and he has been granted them to the greatest level as well. So we learn that the Prophet alayhi salam is free from defects and his character is free from defects, his beautiful appearance, his complexion, his physical features, every single thing about the noble Prophet وسلم, is free from or you free from defects. His whole life, his seerah, his biography, if you were to study it, is free from any blemish or any wrongdoing. Now Sayyiduna Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu an, companion of the Prophet salam, a shair, a poet who wrote in praise of the Prophet salam, throughout his life. What did he say? This was the aqeed of the Sahaba who spent days and nights with the Prophet He says, خُلِقْتَ مُبَرَّأً مِّن كُلِّ عَيْبٍ That, O oh, beloved Prophet وسلم, you were created free mubarra from every defect min kulli aibin. Now, who is saying this? A Sahabi Rasul. Where do we take our aqeedah from? From the Sahaba. Now, anything that the Sahaba have said, this is a hujjah for us, and we believe in that wholeheartedly. And Sayyiduna Hassan bin Thabit radiallahu anhu is saying that khuliqta mubarra min kulli aibin. That, O oh, beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have been created free from every defect. So, Al Muqaddas, that blessed individual, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is free from every wrongdoing, every defect, every evil trait. So, this uh, fits upon the dhat of the Prophet sallam, completely, this name. And the other variation, the other reading is Al Muqaddis. Al Muqaddis with a kasra on the dal. And what is the meaning of this? Al Mutahiru manittaba'ahu min arjasi shirk. Subhanallah. That blessed individual who purifies those who follow him, all those who follow him, from the filth of polytheism, from the impurities of polytheism. This is the Prophet Al Muqaddis. He purifies all those who believe in him from the impurities, from the filth of shirk, of polytheism. Subhanallah. So, Look at the two meanings. Al Muqaddas, the one who himself is pure, the one who himself is free from all defects. And Al Muqaddis, we just heard, the one who purifies others, the one who cleanses others from evils and the impurities of shirk. So, Alhamdulillah, we follow the Prophet, وسلم, we are his ummati. And when we embraced faith upon him, the Prophet, وسلم, Al Muqaddis, he has purified us. We believed in the Prophet as the final Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has purified us from any filth or impurity of shirk. That cannot even come close to us. And this particular was this particular attribute and characteristic, meaning the Prophet salam purifying others from uh, shirk, from polytheism, from the filth of polytheism, this is also found, this was the meaning is also found in a verse of the Quran. And this is in Surah Baqarah. When Sayyidina Ibrahim salam and his blessed son Sayyidina Ismail salam, when they completed the construction of al kaabatul Musharrafah, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they prayed to Allah Jalla wa ala. What was that dua? This is mentioned in Surah Baqarah. Rabbana wab'ath fihim rasoolan minhum يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Subhanallah, meaning, O oh our Lord, and send towards them, meaning the inhabitants of Makkah, a messenger from amongst them, and he will recite upon them your ayat, your verses, and he will teach them the book and wisdom, and he will purify them, وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Oh Allah, you are the mighty, the all-wise. So here Sayyidina Ibrahim is praying. What did he pray? That, ya Allah, send a messenger to them who will teach them your ayat, who will recite to them your ayat, who will teach them the book and wisdom, and he will purify them. So this is that was the Prophet وسلم, is the one who purifies others from the evils, from the filth and impurities of shirk. And this is the dua that uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim salam made and it was fulfilled when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was sent to Makkah al-Mukarramah, subhanallah. Even the Prophet alayhi salam himself said in one hadith, Ana da'watu Abi Ibrahim. I am the supplication of my father, my blessed father Ibrahim. 
because we know the Prophet is from the same lineage of Sayyiduna Ismail and Sayyiduna Ismail is one of his forefathers. So he said, I am the supplication of my father Ibrahim, meaning this supplication that I've just mentioned to you. So the Prophet this name of his Al-Muqaddis, we've just uh, shown how it's also established from the Quran that the Prophet is the one who frees others, who purifies others from any sort of impurities related to shirk. When the Prophet ﷺ came to Makkah al-Mukarramah, when he blessed the world and especially that uh, blessed city, al-Makkah al-Mukarramah with his noble presence, he, he told people about the right path. He freed them from polytheism. He purified their hearts and minds. And this is why we refer to him as al-Muqaddis, the meaning, the one who purifies others, al-Mutahiru man ittaba'ahu min arjasi shirk the one who purifies those who follow him from the impurities of shirk. And Alhamdulillah, we are followers of the Prophet Salam, and hence we are saved from shirk. He has purified us, so we have a lot to be grateful for. So this was the first name that we mentioned. Al-Muqaddis also can be read as Al-Muqaddis, as you've heard. Now the second name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I'd like to mention, Al-Muqaffi. Al-Muqaffi, Mim, Qaf, Fa, and Ya, Al-Muqaffi. One meaning of this is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that individual after whom there is no Prophet after whom there is no prophet. Uh, just like Aqib and uh, the term Khatamun Nabiyin, the seal of prophets, the final prophet. Now here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to this world as the final prophet of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And as such, there can be none who is a prophet after him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned this in his noble sayings, in his hadith as well. In one hadith he said, Ana Khatamun Nabiyin, la Nabiyya Ba'di. That I am the finality of prophets. I am the seal of prophets. La nabiyya ba'di. There is no prophet after me. And this is our aqidah. Somebody who has the slightest bit of doubt in this, he cannot be a Muslim. He leaves the fold of Islam if he was a Muslim. So we have no doubt in this whatsoever that the Prophet is the final prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the Quran also mentions this was al-muqaffi meaning being the final prophet. In the famous verse that we recite, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَاكِرْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the Prophet sallallahu is the khatam, the seal, the final prophet. Meaning he's the seal of all prophets. There's no prophet to come after him. Al-Muqaffi, meaning that individual who is the final prophet. Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said in one hadith, أَنَا الْمُقَفِّي قَفَّيْتُ النَّبِيِّين I am Muqaffi and I came after all the Anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam. Now even though the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we know, we learn from scholars that his nur was created first. But when it came to coming to the world, he was sent last. Meaning Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam was the first blessed Prophet to come to the earth, first human to bless the earth. Now when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, he came as the final Prophet. He was sent last from amongst all the Prophets, but we know his nur was created first. And this is mentioned in various ahadith as well. So one meaning of Al-Muqaffi, the one who came right at the end, the one who came after all the Anbiya Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Another meaning of Al-Muqaffi is Al-Muttabi'u Athara Man Qablahu Min Al-Anbiya. Al-Muqaffi is the one who follows the footsteps or the way of those Anbiya who came before him, who preceded him. And this is obviously the case with our Prophet ﷺ that when he came, he, he followed the ways of the Anbiya ﷺ before him. I mean, they were believers in oneness. They had the best character amongst their nations. And every good act that they did, the Prophet ﷺ did it as well but to a greater extent. And one beautiful point that the scholars have said that the Prophet ﷺ in fact would instruct the other Anbiya ﷺ before he came to this world in Alamul Arwah. In Alamul Arwah, the world of souls, there are different worlds, different realms. The Prophet ﷺ would perform tarbiyah of the Anbiya ﷺ there. And hence this is why when they came to the world, they were the best in character and they were the greatest in their time. And that was the tarbiyah the instruction of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So all of those blessings that the Anbiya received were via our master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the seventh part of the Quran, there is a verse, the translation is, O oh, beloved, 
these Anbiya are those individuals whom Allah guided. He made them those who are guided. And He made them those who guide others as well. So follow that guidance. Now, in the tafsir of this verse, the ulama have stated that it means that, O Prophet wasallam, all those good actions that the previous Anbiya did, all of those good acts, follow them as well. And the Prophet wasallam followed them and as I mentioned, he did them to the greatest degree, the greatest level. And this is why he is known as Al-Muqaffi, the one who follows what the Anbiya who came before him did. Al-Muttabi'u athara man qablahu min al-Anbiya. Now the third name that I would like to introduce, uh, this name is Al-Ghani. Ghain Noon Ya. Normally we say Ghani. Now this is also a name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we know Allah Azza wa Jal is also Ghani. So what does it mean here? When we say Allahu Ghaniyun, this means Alladhi la yahtaju ila ahadin. The one who is not in need or dependent on anyone. Meaning Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is all independent. He is not in need of anyone. Now, Allah Jalla wa Ala is Ghani and this is the meaning. Inna Allah ghaniyun anil alameen. For example, it says in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is independent of all the worlds. He is not reliant or dependent on anyone. Uh, it's mentioned beautifully in a hadith that if all of creation were to come together to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they devote their entire lives to his worship, his ibadah. They do not increase his excellence in any way whatsoever. Meaning if all of creation were to gather and worship Allah, throughout their lives. Similarly, if all of creation came together and disobeyed Allah throughout their lives, this was their mission for example, they just disobeyed Allah throughout their lives, this would not decrease the shan, the excellence, the exaltedness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the least. Now, this is what is meant by ghani. Allah is ghani, as Allah is independent. He does not need the ibadah. Ibadah does not affect him in any way when people worship him. Neither does disobedience as well. But when we speak about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we say he is Ghani, the meaning is different. The meaning is وَمَعْنَاهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ الَّذِي لَا حَاجَةَ لَهُ إِلَّا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى When we call someone in creation Ghani, it means he is not dependent on anyone except for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He is only dependent and reliant upon the that of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And when we look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is obviously the case, 100%, no doubt in that whatsoever, that throughout his life, even in Qiyamah, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given his beloved such a rank and maqam that his beloved is only dependent on the that of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. As for normal human beings, as for us, then we are dependent upon creation as well, many occasions. And we are dependent upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. Meaning on the day of judgment, who will intercede for us? The Prophet ﷺ will intercede for us. We are in need of wasail, wasila, means intermediaries to the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the Prophet ﷺ, he has a direct relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he is only dependent upon the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Suyuti rahmatullahi ta'ala, he mentions this. He says, وَكَذَلِكَ كَانَ صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And the Prophet ﷺ is like that, meaning... الَّذِي لَا حَاجَةَ لَهُ إِلَّا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى He is that individual that has no need from anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is only dependent upon the that of Allah jalla wa ala. So the Prophet alayhi salam is a ghani. And Allah jalla wa ala has indicated towards this name in the Quran as well. So Surah Duha verse 8, Allah jalla wa ala says, وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى We found you in need and we enriched you. وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى O beloved, we found you in need and we enriched you. We made you independent. Now what does it mean here, غَنِي فَأَغْنَى in relation to the Prophet ﷺ? The ulama have given two meanings. Number one, that the people came and they presented their wealth and everything they had, their possessions to the Prophet ﷺ and gave him full authority 
uh, to do as he likes with it. And this happened on many occasions. For example, when Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha, when she married the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when the nikah took place, she gave all her wealth to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was a very wealthy woman. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him ghani, fa'aghna, enriched him. Likewise, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anha, on numerous occasions, it's famous that he came with everything he had at home and placed it at the blessed feet of Rasulullah alayhi wa and said, I have left Allah Azza wa Jal and his beloved for my family members. They are sufficient for my family members. So like this, on many occasions, people presented their mal, their wealth and what they had, their belongings to the Prophet salam, and gave him full authority to do with it as he wishes. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him ghani. A second meaning that the ulama uh, have mentioned is that Ghani here, enrichment means enrichment of the heart, being wealthy from the heart, not physically having a lot of possessions or wealth, but being content. And this is a wealth in itself. And the Prophet wasallam had that in abundance as well, that he did not rely on people, he did not have his eyes on people's wealth or possessions, no. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed him with such a rank that if he wanted to live his life, without eating, drinking, or doing anything that we do as human beings, he could have. But the ulama explained that he ate, he drank, he married, for example, to create ease for his ummah. And these became sunan, the ways of the Prophet wasallam. So we follow the Prophet wasallam. it creates ease for us as well. We are not powerful and strong like the Prophet wasallam in the sense that we can't go for days on end without food and drink. Uh, this was the shan of the Prophet ﷺ. But he ate out of compassion for us. He drank out of compassion for us. He married as well for the sake of his ummah, meaning to create ease for the ummah. This is how the scholars have explained it. So he wasn't, sallallahu alayhi wa in need of fulfilling his desires, no. In fact, he had the most control over his desires from all of creation. Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha states, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa from all the people had the most control over his desires. So he wasn't in need of filling desires like other human beings. And his level of zuhud, asceticism, was that he never turned his attention to any worldly thing. He didn't need to, meaning this was his ghina, his wealth and his, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enriched him that he didn't need to fulfill any of his desires. And in fact, he was always engrossed in divine remembrance. So the things that I mentioned, the Prophet ﷺ eating, drinking, marrying, this was for the ease of the Ummah. Otherwise, he was not in need of any of this, of fulfilling his desires. He had the most control, as we heard, he had the most control over his desires. So he always thought about the Ummah and he was compassionate towards them. He was a ghani, meaning he only relied and was dependent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was engrossed in the divine love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a portion of this blessed name, meaning Ghani, may Allah give us the ability to control our desires as well and to be content with little. Inshallah, this will give us blessings in both worlds. Obviously, every blessing you have, you'll be accountable for it in the hereafter. So, the less you have, the less accountability. The next name that I'd like to bring into the episode, the final name of today's episode is Al-Aziz. And this has been mentioned in the verse of the Quran, Surah At-Tawbah. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ Meaning, a noble messenger has come to you from amongst you. مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ Your falling into hardship is difficult upon him. Meaning, the Prophet ﷺ doesn't like to see that his ummati falls into difficulty. عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ So this is a name of the Prophet ﷺ. Three meanings have been given. Number one, Al-Ghalib, meaning that blessed individual who is predominant. And we see that the Prophet ﷺ is dominant over all of creation. All of Allah's creation, he is Al-Ghalib, he is the dominant one. His deen, Al-Islam, is most dominant. And we know today the fastest going religion is Islam. Secondly, we see that it's dominant over all other religions. So Al-Aziz, one meaning is Al-Ghalib. The dominant one. The second meaning that ulama have given is Alladhi la nadir lahu. That blessed individual in creation who does not have an equal, who does not have a match. La nadir lahu. No one is parallel to him. He is unparalleled, unmatched, unique. 
And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is called Aziz as well. And again, Sayyidina Jibreel Alayhi uh, Salam, for example, one narration says, I, I went to the Mashriq Maghrib, Falam Ara Rajulan Aftala min Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I did not find anyone superior to the Prophet Alayhi Salam. He was unique. There was no Nadir, there was no like for him. There was no uh, no one who had a similarity to him. And the third meaning that the ulama have given is Al-Mu'izzu li ghayrihi Al-Aziz means the one who grants honor to others, the one who bestows respect to others. And Alhamdulillah we see this, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever follows him, whoever believes in him, whoever adopts his sunan, whoever follows the commandments that he came with, avoids the prohibitions that he mentioned, that person gains respect gains maqam, status in the world, and more importantly in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gains proximity to Allah jalla wa ala, and that is through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and following the Prophet alayhi wa sallam. So the meaning here is al-mu'izzu li ghayri, the one who grants respect to others. So al-aziz, one name of the Prophet alayhi wa sallam, al-ghalib, one meaning is al-ghalib, the dominant one. One meaning of his al-ladhi la nadira lahu, the one who has no match. And the third meaning was al li ghayrihi, the one who grants honor to others. So this was the final name of the episode. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the blessings of these beautiful names. Until the next episode, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect and preserve all of you. Ameen, bijahin nabi ameen, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The beautiful names of beloved Prophet. The beautiful names of beloved Prophet. The beautiful names of beloved prophet